bull flags may potentially be forming everywhere across the Bitcoin chart and the altcoin charts. Could this lead to a potentially explosive move to the upside? Let's dive in and analyze. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Crypto Kirby here, your cryptocurrency expert, back with another edition of the daily live stream. Today, we're going to discuss the Bitcoin price and the action inside the chart right now. Bitcoin is truly coiling up for what I'm expecting to be an absolutely explosive move. And my friends, it's not only here on Bitcoin, but it's across several altcoin charts as well. So let's look at all of this. All right. So as a full time trader, I'd like to discuss with you my strategy, my game plan, and how I plan to crush this market right now in the immediate term. So without any further ado, you guys already know the deal. If you like these daily crypto videos and nightly live streams, smack that thumbs up button, click the subscribe, tick the little bell, and let's get this crypto. Moon the likes, ladies and gentlemen. Moon them up. All right, so we'll begin with our Bitcoin technical analysis. And of course, before we begin, this is not investment advice. This is not trading advice. These are only my own opinions, ideas, and speculative hypotheses on the market. Always do your own research and your own due diligence before investing or trading, as this market is extremely high risk, and I am not your financial advisor. I will never tell you what to do with your trades or investments. That being said, let's begin right here on the one-day time frame for Bitcoin. Now, just to recap, if you are subscribed here, you would already know this, and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. We are seeing Bitcoin coil up into a symmetrical triangle, a series of higher lows, followed by a series of lower highs. Now, my friends, on a macro level, looking at this whole move right here, we do have to understand that Bitcoin still is in what I believe to be a potential danger zone. We are trading within the confines of this old historic confluence zone, which is outlined by the red box. And it would only be natural here to see old support look to act as a new tentative resistance. For the time being on a macro level, we have seen Bitcoin respect this thus far. Now it gets interesting because upon this pullback here, we have seen on a micro level, old resistance turn into new support up here around the $6,500 region, right? So now we're stuck right in between these two micro zones. We have resistance at the top, which is also in confluence with the resistance of the macro structure, but it's also resistance on a micro level as well, right? It's our, our last swing high. And we now have our micro support range just below it at 6,500, squeezing us into this pennant here, right? Now, something interesting as well to keep in mind is that the volume has declined rapidly since our heinous capitulation uh, down to 3.8K before this V-shaped recovery. So, I mean, we're coiling up into a pennant. Uh, we're stuck between two micro ranges, a support and resistance. We're seeing the volume decline. Uh, my friends, this is the absolute recipe for an explosive move. So now we have to start looking for clues as to which direction could this possibly uh, look to break out in, right? Now, if you're new to this channel, you may not understand this, but if, if you're a veteran here in the house that Don Don Carbonaccio built, you would know that technical analysis is not a guessing game, right? It's not about, uh, you know, trying to predict the future, right? Because this type of thing here, this is a coin flip, right? I mean, it's either going to break out to the upside or to the downside. What we're looking for, right, as technical analysts is confluences uh, coming into play here that can give us the best perceived edge over the market for a high probability play of high potential reward, low potential risk. Now, naturally here, if we lose this support range right around 6,500, my friends, we, it would have done several things at this point, right? And one, this would be now a loss of the higher low trajectory, right? Which would be inherently bearish, right? If we are to fall below this region here. Uh, we could see now if we pull up our Fibonacci retracement tool, we're going to take the Fibonacci extension targets here on the logarithmic scale, okay? And I want to show you guys here that we have already tapped that 0.618 golden Fibonacci, right? We have essentially, uh, we overshot it just a bit, 
not really too much. The price hugged it, and we have seen that rejection. If we go to the regular scale, you could see that we just got into the honey hole here, right? And if you're not familiar, the honey hole of the Don is between the 0.5 and the 0.618 Fibonacci retracements and or extensions. In this case, it is an extension, okay? So we've seen that we've come up into the range here of which, in my opinion, would be a normal potential rejection zone, right? Uh, if we flip on our moving averages here on the daily time frame, please do not lose sight that here between the 50 and the 200 day moving average, we are still seeing a death cross here with both of them essentially still tilted downward, right? That definitely, in my opinion, is still a macro bearish factor uh, to keep in consideration. Uh, also here as well, what we have to understand is that we did see uh, a, ba a bearish MACD histogram divergence. Wow, that is a mouthful, okay? We could see here that we had lower highs here on the MACD histogram with ascending highs on the price action, okay? That has thus far uh, shown some weakness here all together in confluence with everything else that I just showed you, the death cross on the one day coming up to test the top of this macro uh, range here, right? Where the old support is now playing as a new tentative resistance, at least for the time being. Uh, and the Fibonacci zone here, right? On the regular scale, we are in the zone, right? We just got up into it and got rejected out. And on the logarithmic we actually tested up to the top of the honey hole before a brief little overshot and then a rejection. Okay, so keep in mind that right now there is definitely some bearish things to take into consideration, right? All things being said though, um, we don't really have any confirmations here until we start to break out of this structure, right? And that's easier said than done, my friends, because as you can see here, the price action has essentially been stuck in equilibrium now for about three weeks, right? And if we, uh, we'll just change the color on this briefly so that you guys can uh, basically see this here. I mean, the price action has been stuck within a very tight range now for about three weeks, okay? Um, and the fact of the matter is here is that the volume declining is generally what happens before an explosive move, right? And I outlined this earlier, um, that right now we're at the end of this structure, if the structure is to be respected, and the volume is very, very low. Um, this is traders uh, just awaiting for the move to occur, because as I'm showing you right here, at least for me, I just don't see a high probability play right now. Sure, we have all the bearish stuff going for it, which I just outlined, but let's discuss the bullish side of this now, okay? Surely, we're on a higher low trajectory, right? Surely we also saw what could have been the ultimate capitulation. We also have the halving event coming up uh, in about three weeks as well, roughly, right? Um, and that in and of itself, you know what, we'll discuss the chart right now for just a second, but then I need to go uh, down a rabbit hole with you all. I know that you guys enjoy this when I talk about the market more um, on a psychological level as somebody that's been in the market for a long time has seen a lot of the um, ups and downs and, and craziness that goes on in here. And I want to discuss, you know, back in time here, right? Back in July of 2016, when we saw the last halving, I want to discuss how the market has changed from that point in time before we saw this huge bubble um, to the halving now and give you some perspective on that. But for right now, let's stay here with the bullishness, okay? What we have to understand is that we're still on the higher low trajectory. We are seeing that this old range of resistance has, at least for the time being, acted as a new support. And if we are to be able to break up above our old prior high around 7,500, my friends, it could be clear sailing all the way up towards the $9,000 region. And why do I say the $9,000 region? Well, you guys can see here, again, we do have our old support up there, multi-month support, right? Then it flipped into resistance, not once, but then twice, okay? So we see that that's a historic confluence range around 9,000 in and of itself. And then another little piece to add into the puzzle here in case uh, you're not subscribed and you don't know about this. Again, if you're not subscribed, my friends, hit that subscribe button, tick the little bell, select all, and let's get this crypto. Welcome to the channel.
But we do have a gap here on the CME futures chart, uh, up around 90, or excuse me, 9,600. Oh, <laughs> 9,060. Excuse me. I hope that, uh, you didn't get confused there. The gap is at 9,060. Okay. Now these gaps do not need to fill, but they have filled a bunch of times historically. Uh, they have filled more often than not. Of course, past performance does not indicate future results. But if we do wind up breaking above that staunch resistance level, my friends, I mean, it's, for me, it feels almost like a magnet is going to look to pull it towards that potential, uh, historic confluence zone, right? I mean, I just don't see much in this vicinity here, right? Uh, excuse this chart. We'll go back. Now you see the gap. Uh, it's just, it's not as clean to draw there. So let me go back to the other chart now. Um, and it's this range that I'm talking about, uh, right in the middle here. I just don't see much in terms of why the price would have to get rejected somewhere in the middle here when there's a gap that traders may look to potentially speculate towards just almost for a self-fulfilling prophecy at that point, uh, along with the fact that, you know, the bulls may want to test this old level, especially with this being now the bearish ceiling that's kept pressure applied to this market to the downside. I mean, if the bulls were able to break above this range, above 10,500, it would pretty much be the most bullish thing Bitcoin has done since breaking above that $6,000 range all the way back in uh, mid-2019, right? Let's get this crypto. So um, I think it will be a difficult task if the bulls are going to get above 10,500. But if we are to break out aggressively out of this pennant here, uh, you know, I do think that my targets, at least for the time being, my tentative targets are probably going to be up near the $9,000 region. And of course, uh, I am going to be looking to trade this breakout aggressively, either to the upside or to the downside, my friends. Um, right now, I can't be in a position at this very moment in time. I don't see a play for me right now. Like I've stated, it's more so a coin flip. This range right now for me, there's no confirmations here. I'm awaiting, cool, calm, and collected, preparing to strike like a cobra out of the grass and get this crypto. And my friends, if you want to see exactly how I'm going to be playing this breakout, right? When I see a trade setup that that for me with my strategy looks correct, I will be posting that for you exclusively in VIP. All of my entries in real time, my exits in real time, where I look to take profits, uh, where I'm putting my stop loss, etc. I post all of that exclusively around the clock for you in VIP. I can only be here on YouTube once per day, but in VIP, it's 24-7 around the clock. I will be posting my trade setup ideas, my strategy ideas, all of it. For whichever direction this breaks out, I'm going to be looking for a high probability play with a high potential reward, low potential risk to potentially crush it and get this crypto. If you'd like to see all of my trade ideas and all of that, my friends, I will see you in VIP right now after this video. Today is the day. It's time to transform yourself from average Joe into savage Joe. Let's get this crypto. I'll see you in VIP right now after this video. So now that we pretty much have uh, outlined Bitcoin here, and don't think I forgot about the the having and things of that nature. We're going to discuss the psychological level in just a moment, but I quickly want to go over to the altcoins uh, to show you guys basically what's going on over there quickly, and then we'll come back talk about the having some other psychological things, how this market has changed over the, the course of the past few years, how I think it could potentially impact this market moving forward, etc. All right. So let's go to the altcoins. But my friends, if you haven't already, I mean, I hope you're getting in the habit of doing it. If you could just please leave a thumbs up here on the video, I really would appreciate it. And leave a comment. Say anything, my friends. It, you could type one letter, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, you know, these moon boys get wrecked, but it was not me. Whatever you'd like to do, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, you know, do it for the algorithm. But most importantly, do it for the Don. Thank you. And, and as I just stated earlier, if you're not already subscribed, I mean, my friends, this is one of the most realistic Bitcoin technical analysis channels you're ever going to find. So hit that subscribe button, tick the little bell, select all, and welcome to the house that Don Don Carbonaccio built. Sheesh. Okay. Moving along now to the altcoins. Okay. 
let's start here uh, with the total cap, okay? Just so we get an overview of what's going on. Uh, we're looking right now at the daily time frame. What I want you guys to understand is that we've been in a series of lower highs. Textbook bearish. I mean, there's no there's no other way to look at this on a yearly outlook. It's been very bearish, and we formed this level of historic. Uh, confluence here in this red box, right? Tons of historic support and resistance flips. And what do you know, ladies and gentlemen, where are we right now? Ding, 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 chicken wings for dinner, tofu if you're vegan. We're trading right inside that range right here, right now. And my friends, look at the Fibonacci extension targets. We are right now tapping and getting tentatively rejected off of the golden 0.618 Fibonacci extension inside that range of historic macro confluence, which could act as a new bearish ceiling for this market, just as we saw this range of historic confluence become the new bearish ceiling. You see how this works, right, my friends? This was support, support, back-tested, resistance, back-tested again months later, resistance. Now, my friends, look at this range here, resistance, support, support, support. Now, is this finally going to become resistance here, creating this bearish ceiling just as this one was created overhead? I think it's possible. And if we are going to get rejected in here, it would look natural to me. It would not look uh, out of the ordinary to the dawn at all. It would keep the lower high trajectory intact. And it could set us up for a potential ultimate capitulation somewhere down the line if this market is to remain bearish. Let's get this crypto, okay? Just setting the stage before we look at the other things. Now, uh, let's go to Ethereum. This one, my friends, in particular, does not have a bull flag on it to me. Uh, it's been in a very parabolic structure here. Just like we saw on the total cap chart, we are bouncing off of actually getting rejected off of that 0.618 Fibonacci right now. Uh, we see that we have this old historic range of confluence here, very similar to the total cap. I mean, and that's only natural as Ethereum is one of the, the largest cap cryptos, right? Um, if we get rejected at this range, I mean, it would also be normal to potentially form another triple bottom, right? To look for a, a potential triple bottom retest. And if we do get rejected, uh, you know, it wouldn't be surprising to potentially see this bubble pop here with this being the starting point with about uh, 1400 USD being the top. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we have our 0.618 golden Fibonacci retracement down at about $47 USD on my chart. And I mean, right now with this bearish trajectory, I don't think that it would be abnormal to see that potentially occur. I mean, I'm not saying that has to occur. I'm just saying if it did, it's not like, wow, nobody called $47. I mean, it's right there on the chart. I mean, it's essentially a very normal target, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that that has to occur. I'm just stating that if it did go there, I don't see anything abnormal about it. Let's get this crypto. Um, you know, for the bullish side, it's going to have to break above, um, uh, $190 USD, and then we'll have to look to make a new higher high. But I mean, look at what's looming overhead in terms of resistance. Uh, you know, I just don't see much bullishness until we get above that range. Okay. So, um, you know, it is what it is. The chart it is a very macro perspective. Okay. But we could see on Litecoin, we have a different story. Uh, it's more so like Bitcoin potentially forming a bull flag here, right? Uh, maybe to get us to the top of that box where we do have a ton of macro resistance confluence, right? Also, my friends, please keep in mind that we are right now into that honey hole right there. Okay, we are right in the middle of the honey hole for a potential rejection as well. Keep that in mind. But maybe the flag can get all the way up to the 0.618, right? You don't want to rule it out yet. We have tapped up and we're rejected the first test in there, but we never reached the 0.618, okay? Getting to the 0.618 would also keep the lower high trajectory intact, but if you're talking about a potential target, I mean, it does 
pretty much line up with the range of of historic macro resistance and the 0.618 Fibonacci. Um, you know, uh, fifty three dollars about that USD. Um, but again, we are in a bearish zone. It's very tough for me to get macro bullish here. I'm just stating that. If there is going to be a bull flag breakout, around $53 USD would be my target uh, for a potential rise to that range. Let's get this crypto. Okay. Um, XRP as well. We are seeing a potential bull flag as well. This one's very clear, very similar to Litecoin in the sense that we're still in a very bearish trend here, in my opinion. Uh, and a target for me would be right up around the top of this box, which also coincides with the 0.618 Fibonacci all on the logarithmic scale around 22 cents usd would also keep the lower high trajectory intact glad we ran through these let's get this crypto and of course my friends if she dumps i mean uh you know we're talking about <laughs> this could be a potential uh absolutely heinous capitulation uh i mean i don't see any confluence anywhere until down around seven cents to four cents usd um, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Okay, let's get this crypto. Now, uh, briefly, let's talk about the having here. Okay, um, because right now, I think that many are just under the impression that the having means that Bitcoin has to go to the moon because of the supply and demand uh, thesis behind it, right? And that is valid. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, sure, it is valid. There are less coins being created into the ecosystem on a daily basis. So if the demand stays the same or increases, surely the price could slash should follow, right? But what I have to say about that is one, this is not very bullish from a mining perspective. Miners are not happy about this. Um, you know, and right now, many miners are either in the process of or are preparing to shut down their businesses because it's simply not profitable for a large majority of them anymore. Now, this does not apply to everybody, okay? There are mining conglomerates that this is still profitable for, and it still will be profitable for them even if the price is to drop significantly lower from where we are at right now. I'm just stating that it is going to change the way that that mining operates right and we may see a more centralized mining ecosystem as time progresses and i think that will only get more prominent as further havings come into play by the next one uh where we're seeing the block reward be about three coins per block uh my friends i think we're going to see a very very different um, structure in the way of how the hash rate is distributed. Um, I think that we're going to see a very select few amount of mining conglomerates with the majority of the hash power. Um, you know, it does essentially change the decentralized aspect of Bitcoin. In the beginning, it was very, very decentralized in terms of essentially anybody could turn on a machine, right, and mine Bitcoin, keeping the system very decentralized. The more difficult it gets and the more expensive it gets to mine coins, the more centralized it naturally becomes because only the biggest and the baddest can have enough capital, the, uh, the employees, the facilities, et cetera, to mine at that magnitude. So it does change Bitcoin, okay? But let's look back here now uh, to where we were Roughly, I believe it was July 9th. Don't quote me on that. I believe it was right around this time where the halving was, okay? And of course, every moon boy and their brother looks at it and goes, there it is, Kirby. It sparked the bull run. I mean, I, I really do have mixed feelings on that, my friends. You have to understand Bitcoin was already in a very parabolic uptrend before this, right? Uh, we had already seen the hype from Bitcoin go from pennies all the way up to hundreds of dollars, right? Or rather over a thousand dollars briefly pull back down. Uh, and we were still in this, uh, I mean, yes, we were in a bear market, but looking at the grand scheme of things, Bitcoin was still relatively new. There'd only been one having before this, right? So when you look into this, my friends, right? Sure, this could be due to the having, but you have to remember what happened here as well, okay? Altcoins became very prominent here, mainly because of the ICO bubble, right? And you have to understand that when this altcoin market went crazy, okay? I actually want to pull up the total cap again and look here around that same date, okay? 
My friends, this is what we're talking about here. That's essentially where the having was at, right here, okay? And then it led to this absolutely explosive, explosive move up, right? Which is probably when uh, the majority of you either got into crypto or heard about crypto, right? Um, and the thing is that at that point in time, you have to remember, or maybe you don't, um, there really weren't many fiat options or even stable coin options to purchase altcoins. It really was Bitcoin pairs only. So people had to buy Bitcoin to then buy altcoins with that Bitcoin. And when you bought the, the altcoins with the Bitcoin, it didn't sell the Bitcoin for spot price, right? Someone else just now had your Bitcoin. They didn't dump it back onto the market necessarily, right? They didn't have to. They could still hold the Bitcoin. So there was this, uh, it's, it was like a self-sufficient machine where people would buy Bitcoin to then buy an altcoin, which pushed the price of the altcoin up, but didn't drop the price of Bitcoin because the person that just got the Bitcoin in the trade didn't necessarily have to liquidate it for USD or a stable coin at that time, right? So you had the price being pushed up on both ends, right? They're buying Bitcoin and then buying the altcoin with the Bitcoin. Just the same with the ICOs. They would buy Ethereum and then buy the ICO, right? Uh, and even to that extent, people needed Ethereum to purchase ICOs, right? But on a ton of exchanges, sure, there were several large exchanges that you could buy Ethereum with fiat. I'm not saying there weren't, but a large portion of them still only had Bitcoin to Ethereum pairs. So people had to buy Bitcoin, to buy Ethereum, to buy the ICOs. And you can see, my friends, this just kept pushing the market further and further up. There was so much buy pressure and not much sell pressure on the fiat price at all and mix it into the equation. Margin trading, leverage trading, right? Uh, derivatives trading, that was not prominent at all at this portion in time, right? Sure, it was there, but the volume was so insignificant. It was dwarfed. It wasn't even talked about. You barely even saw anybody say the word short and Bitcoin in the same sentence. There was really no... Um, you know, interest, you would see sell at this region, right? This may be a spot where we see selling action, but you didn't see people saying, oh, look, they're going to short at this region. It just wasn't a thing yet, right? You also didn't have the CME futures. You didn't have the CBOE futures, right? You didn't have backed futures. Uh, and you also didn't have uh, essentially a bubble popping. You had absolute euphoria, only buy pressure to the upside because like I've stated, when you sold or excuse me, when you purchased altcoins, you had to do so in Bitcoin. I mean, if you're not, if you're new to the space, you may not understand what I'm saying. There were no options for stable coins at that time. Very, very, very limited. Okay. It was a big deal when there would be a tether pair added for an altcoin, right? Uh, it, it would have been a, a topic of discussion. That's what I'm trying to, to, to tell you, right? Um, so basically, Bitcoin was serving as a utility token to purchase altcoins. And it did not lead to Bitcoin having any sell pressure in the order books and the fiat markets, right? In the spot fiat market. And on the uh, other side of it, you didn't have people constantly looking to speculate in the futures markets and the derivatives markets uh, to get on the short end of the trade, which, I mean, we could debate for, you know, uh, time immemorial here that that has led to manipulation in this market, right? So there's a lot of things different now, my friends. You have to understand, it really bothers me when I hear people say, you know, this is only the beginning. We're at the beginning of cryptocurrency. No, James, you're not. Do you not get it? This market is very, very mature now, okay? These were the Wild West days back here. It was amazing. I mean, I, I mean, I hope that some of you were along for that ride. It was amazing to see this market grow like this, right, over time. Um, but right now, you have to understand, Bitcoin is traded 
I mean, on a ton of uh, largely regulated global exchanges in the futures markets, we have a ton of derivatives platforms that get way more volume than the spot volume. That didn't that didn't exist here. You understand? The spot volume was basically all it was. We also had people buying things like Ethereum to speculate on ICOs that also didn't push the price down, only up, right? So now we have a ton of other factors that that come into play here, right? Um, and the thing is, my friends, is that times have changed. That doesn't mean it's it has to be for the worse. I'm just saying you have to identify that this time is very different than this point in time. It's night and day. It's almost as if it's it's a completely different market, right? That's just it's not debatable. That that's truly what we're talking about here, right? Um, so the fact is, my friends, is that um, I don't think purely because uh, of of a time that. You know, we say, oh, look, the having happened here and then this run happened. So if the having happens here, this run must happen. I don't think that that's logical. I mean, you're talking about two very, very, very different periods of time. Okay. Um, you know, I hope you understand that. And again, if you do, my friends, if you could leave a thumbs up on the video, if you appreciate this, uh, you know, sometimes I'll do psychological analysis like this. I mean, I know that you guys appreciate it. So if you could leave a thumbs up uh, and share this video if you need uh, some of your other trader friends to hear about this. I mean, you know, I think it's important. So leave a thumbs up if you guys could a comment anything A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, whatever it is, my friends. Let's get this crypto. Thanks, Kirby. Hey, Kirby. I don't care. It just helps the algorithm and I really would appreciate it. Okay. Um, and my friends, again, if you're brand new, I hope that you see by that conversation I just had with you that you're you're probably not going to find channels that that have knowledge like this, right? Um, you know, most of it is moon boy, hullabaloo, garbaggio. So, um, if you want to see more like this on a nearly daily basis, hit that subscribe button, tick the little bell and select all welcome to the house that Don Don Carbonaccio built. And my friends back to the trading for a moment. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get very aggressive here, uh, when this move breaks out. Okay. So, um, right now I told you that I am looking to get in a position. I am not in a position currently right now at the time of recording. I am looking to potentially get into one when I see the breakouts occur. And like I stated, today is the day. It's time to transform yourself from average Joe into savage Joe. Let's get this crypto. I will be posting all of my trade setup ideas for you exclusively in VIP. If you want to see where I'm going to look to enter my trades, exit my trades, potentially take profit on my trades, all of my strategies, everything posted around the clock 24 seven for you. It will be done exclusively in VIP. So my friends, I will see you in VIP right now after this video. Let's get this crypto. And until next time, my friends, the Don has spoken. Be safe, be happy, be healthy. It's your boy, Crypto Kirby. Peace and love, my friends. Curbs.